to a special time. I was gonna say special day and special time, but we we normally stream on Fridays. Welcome. We're doing something a little bit differently. Time, but we we normally Hi. stream on Fridays. I can hear Welcome. Talking. We're doing something a little Hi. bit differently. Time, but... <laughs> there we go. All right. I had to mute myself on Twitch. So thank you to everybody who's joined us. We have, if you were a follower of Zhao Zam's Den, three of these four faces should be familiar to you. We have a new face, but this, the four of these gentlemen are the team behind Against the Dark Master. We have an, um, we had an interview with them earlier this year, and uh, we had a great time playing their game. And they have asked to come back and do another interview and do a very special announcement here on the channel, which I am honored. And I can't turn that down, of course. Of course I'll have you guys on board. Uh, I had a fun last time we chatted. So, let's start things off by doing a roundtable introduction of everybody. Who you are and what you do on the team. Uh, I will start with my to my left with Max. Okay, I'm the I'm Max. I'm the lead game designer of uh, the of Against the Dark Master. I so basically I'm the one to blame if you find some faults in the rules. <laughs> just just anticipating Nick on this because I know that <laughs> he was going to point it out. <clears throat> and uh, so yeah, basically, I my main role is writing the 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 rules of the game. I've been playing for uh, longer than I can remember, or than I want to say. Really, you want to admit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm really happy to be here with you, uh, with you, Matt. To, Thank you this evening. Really, really I was great to honored see you guys you. reached out and asked me to do this. My pleasure. We have okay. oh, got a couple of our the players in chat here. We got Wes is in chat, and so is Oak, who played in the original sessions. Okay, so hey guys, say hi guys. Hi there. We will jump down. We're gonna go. We're gonna go counterclockwise here. I don't. I don't need to introduce myself. I'm on here all the time. <laughs> um, Paulo, you are the newest member of the team. You were not here for the previous interview, yeah. so. Introduce yourself to these folks and tell them what you are doing on the team. Actually, I was there last time, but I was in invisible. How oh, were you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'm Paolo. I am uh, the Tiki of the group. I am behind the website and uh, uh, all the uh, special effects on uh, on uh, on our um, publication. And um, I'm the main tra translator for the Italian version. And I'm a great beta tester of the, all the rules uh, and, uh, and the campaign. Yeah, yeah, it's true. But so uh, you forgot to mention our video maker. Our yeah. video maker, yes. It's, it's, that, that's true. Very talented. Video maker. Very talented video maker. <laughs> yeah. What videos but have you played? you like to play the blame game between us? Uh, each of us blaming uh, each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Perfect>. Strong in <laughs> that. <laughs> right. He, oh, he's the blame guy. Because last interview, Tom was the blame guy. They said, when if yeah. anything went wrong, it was Tom's fault. So Paulo <laughs> has now inherited that honor of being the blame guy. Basically. <laughs> Again, that rule. Let's, uh, well, let's jump to your left right and we'll do tom it's so hard looking on the screen here tom who are yeah. you what do you do yeah. <laughs> other than not being the blame guy anymore <laughs> okay <laughs> first of all thank you matt for having us your hosts and uh well i'm tom uh i am the art director uh for this project also uh main illustrator i think and uh i'm also a contributor to the rules um probably uh, uh in the beginning uh, uh the project started uh with some chats uh, between me and max uh, about house ruling uh, uh some of our favorite games and then evolved and the other people in the team uh, uh went aboard uh so yes i'm basically the art guy here is is this your work behind me yeah, yeah. This this is this is what Tom does. It's pretty kick ass. <laughs> Thank you. This one is getting paid the big bucks. Yeah, right? Yeah, it's the artists. They always make all the money, don't they? 
Yes. Um. Well, Nick, it's your turn. Let's plead your case for some, getting some big bucks. <laughs> yeah. You'll have to admit you do nothing of value, Nick. Now this oh. time. <laughs> you can't escape. <laughs> He's the punching bag. I am uh, Nick. My name is Nick. I'm the one. Um, I'm the CEO of Open Ended Games. And um, I am the one that assigns the blames among us. And um, I am um, the layout designer. Uh, and everything comes after the scrutiny of Tommaso. So uh, he's, you know, I'm under, under him in that aspect. But, um, and also I have, um, you know, don't do anything else than that. <laughs> But um, I, you know, it's, I thank you very much for hosting us today, and it was a, a very great honor last time, and it also was really cool to watching us live, and and I went back to the interview a couple of times to see how, you know, how poor we were, and uh, but you know. It's, uh, it's great to be here, and it's a very, very exciting time. And, yeah, yeah. You know. Nick is the kind of guy that goes back and watches himself. Yeah, we, <laughs> very, we, we <laughs> set music on. <laughs> we can set music on and then listen to <laughs> memories, you know. That's oh, right, that's right, to uh, what, nine months ago? Yeah, 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 yeah. Months ago. yeah. Awesome. Uh, just want to do a quick shout-outs here. Ultra Vino, thank you for the subscription. Uh, Chuck, thank you for the host. Yeah. And uh, to every we've got a lot of people here joining us, which is great because it's the middle of the day here in North America. But for you guys over in Europe, so three of the team members are over in Italy and Nick and I are here in North America. Nick's uh, in the States. Uh, so I don't know what time it is for you guys over there. But it's the evening, early evening. Yeah, it's it's um, 9 p.m. here. There you go. So that's why we're doing this at such a weird time. Oh, people are getting ahead of us in the chat here. Um, <laughs> they want to know what your musical influences are. We're going to get to that. We're going we're gonna to get to that. <laughs> um, uh, let's start with telling these folks about your game. We've already had one person say, I don't know what your game is, but it looks great. Um, I will say it's what I've run it. I've played it. It's a retro clone of like Merp and Rollmaster is like the overview. But I'm going to let you guys launch into it because this is your baby and you sell it. You tell these folks what it's all about. I'm going to link uh, your website while you do that. <laughs> So, well, Against the Dark Master is um, a role-playing game of the um, epic fantasy adventure. So, basically, you take uh, Lord of the Ring, you take Wheel of Time, and you mix it like with uh, some movies uh, from fantasy movies from the eighties, like Dragon Slayer. Or the Black Cauldron. I know Matt's a great fan of that. I am a huge fan um, of movie. You put them in a blender and sprinkle them with some heavy metal, and the mix is gonna be what a session of against the Dark Master is. So it's like uh, um, it's like Lord of the Rings, you know, and uh, uh, the turned yeah. up to the 11th basically yeah. yeah lord of the rings but like the bashki film yeah not exactly. not the yeah. the peter, not the peter jackson, jackson one i'm like what's his name peter yeah. what uh the bashki film like <laughs> the, the the one from the 70s we're going we're going that way for influences yeah we yeah, yeah. Art. we also have some slides to share if you if you want do you want to do that now um do you want to yeah. can you uh, do screen share on your side I, and then I, it'll I, can do, I can do a screen share on zoom i think uh let me know how this, to do rotoscope this. that's right i miss rotoscope yeah um yeah okay. let's Say take sure. a look at some influences so and then this one i okay. uh, linked your site there oh look at this oh you see some something oh yeah we see yeah. it it's up on screen uh, oh i okay. got all of our name tags on there let me make those disappear okay okay oh well. Okay, so so basically, what what Max said, just said, <clears throat> our sources of inspiration. Just slow down. Uh, yeah, because it's Ooh, oh, look at that yeah. burning wheel. That's why you guys have been pushing to do burning wheel. Yeah, yeah, I I, I really want to uh, run a game of burning wheel. Or okay. Mask. 
we, 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 I, we I'm down. I pick up Torchbearer, and you're like, I don't like that one, though. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not. I, I, I said it's not my favorite. It's I know. I'm, I'm just giving it a hard time. <laughs> All right, so here's some inspirations. All right, so we've got Lord of the Rings, we got Terry yeah. Brooks, we got some Dragon Lance, yeah, Burning so Wheel, Rollmaster, yeah, Merp. Yeah, so basically, as you said, it's uh, um, not just Lord of the Rings, but all the you know followers of Tolkien, all the even imitators of um, uh. Uh, how how did you call it, um, Tom? You you used a very specific uh, term to call them. I, I can I can like derivative fiction. Y yeah, something like that. So it's a a whole subgenre basically of, of fantasy. Uh, some of these are are great, are classics. Some. Not so not great. So, not so <laughs> not much. So <laughs> we love them, not, not yeah. the same. <laughs> but, but, but enjoyable nonetheless. Yeah, yeah. And as you said, um, Matt, the Merp and Rollmaster were, were obviously huge influences for us. So we really liked the critical strikes tables and all all that stuff from Rollmaster and we wanted to keep that to 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 do something in, in that vein so just to let you understand if you if you if you're looking for uh, something with very uh, you know so where where where, com where combat can get really brutal well, welcome. If you want yeah. crunch and you want brutality, right. this is yeah. the game for you. Yeah, yeah. That definitely not the game for you if you're looking for something very light yeah. or low point. Uh, it's not narrative. Uh, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. Anybody who's familiar with Rollmaster Merp, this is this Ooh. is it. Oh, look at that! There's Dio. Yeah. I just saw I saw Iron Maiden just two weeks ago. They were here, and I I, I saw it. I, I, I got to yeah. It. I had a private suite with work. I got to host that. It was so good. Yeah, it's perfect. It's great. So yeah. film inspirations. Will oh, Will is so good. Uh, Crawl, Dragon Slayer, and then we've got the metal. So people are asking about the music. Mm -hmm. If you guys go to their website, I've linked it a couple times now. They actually have a soundtrack on there that you can listen to, and it is it is all metal. So that'll answer yeah. your questions about the the musical influences. Yeah, uh, I I mean, uh, apart from Nick, who <laughs> <laughs> doesn't like you metal, to it, it doesn't like for for some weird reason. I don't know. It's it's like the the black sheep of a, of a project but uh <laughs> for, for, <laughs> for us yeah. i have to listen to the every day then talking about this metal and metal <laughs> uh for us heavy metal and role playing always went like you know hand in hand in hand i i don't know if it's if it's common uh, outside of italy but i i'd say that here it's quite um quite common i would think metal no um, yeah no the you know um uh role playing role players that all also listening to heavy metal oh, metal yeah I, yes. I think it's pretty common across the board yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, uh, it's like the, the the two subcultures uh evolved uh, uh on a parallel lane yeah so and we we often use the um, heavy metal soundtracks uh, uh, as a proper soundtracks to our session or to inspire, you know, our adventure or take names for our characters. So it seemed basically the thing to do, so to, 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 uh, to marry our <laughs> two passion this way. We love so that, 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 that's why that's why you, you'll find the 
soundtrack you you were talking about my on, yeah on check, check out their site you'll see the soundtrack you'll see the influences uh, just a really good point i think it was tom made that there are par- parallel progressions is that tom were you the one who said that yeah uh, okay. it, it, it makes sense think about it, the 80s you got the satanic panic for both role-playing games and metal at the same time it is a perfect marriage they're both kind of these outcasts in the metal or in the in the 80s Mm-mm. yeah yeah that, no that's it's, a it's, very good observation sorry i have to write that down it's like a, a light bulb yeah. moment what is this okay uh, so okay <laughs> the chat's okay. making fun of 5e if you, if you play 5e then you listen to taylor swift <laughs> oh come on now be nice uh, <laughs> all right sorry and no no um so we were talking i, I was saying before that uh against the deck master is an epic fantasy game so since basically from a catalium uh, fantasy subgenre and it's always difficult to you know understand what one is talking about when we talk about fantasy because fantasy is like Harry Potter or uh, you know the Game of Thrones uh, or um, Best Serve Cold or the Black Company it's really a huge genre so we epic fantasy as you can see from the I, I hope so I, I haven't yeah, you can see it. Yeah, know. it's up there. I, I, had a, I had a Twitch before me. Don't worry, I'm monitoring it. I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it focuses on the struggle between good and evil. So that that's the big point here. And obviously, representing evil, there's this great dark lord or dark master, as you can imagine, which is the big bad overlord looming in the background right behind you mark that's that's right <laughs> yeah <laughs> and watching. yeah so always behind watching, me. Watching, always skimming yeah and so as you can understand from the title the the player characters are going to be the good guy the good guys because you are obviously against the dark master and the point of um being epic here is having uh, great risks and high stakes in, which means the characters are heroics because they take risks uh, for you know fighting for what they believe in fighting for their passions and even if this means where they could you know they could die or uh, being imprisoned if any of the their enemies is uh, so powerful that seem impossible to uh, to win like uh, I, th- I think with Nick the other day we were um, yeah, we were talking about the against the Dark Master combat and how it like reinforces this idea. You don't remember? <laughs> you oh. were the one. You were the one uh, uh, telling me about this. No, that the, the combat um, that for Oh yeah, the, the, the combat makes sure that the whole uh, system is right and and. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. that raises the stakes to a point that um, every roll it's um, such a suspense, and that suspense uh, often, uh, as you know, whoever played these sort of games, leads to um, unforgettable scenes. And uh, you know, you, we played many different type of role games, but the mm-hmm. one that have this kind of system. Are the one that leave you the, the you know the strongest memories mm. of epic win or epic death. Epic and tale. as Tommaso <laughs> can say, <laughs> my my characters you were more uh, a specific failing. example of epic death. So <laughs> I I died in very many spectacular ways 
and um, I'm often the butt of the joke about that, but I'm I probably <laughs> carry it on my back. But that's memorable, <laughs> right? Like you guys, yeah, remember yeah, everything is memorable. Those, uh, those the system epic deaths. Creates, the, the system creates such a uh, or constantly high stakes that um, every combat, even the one that is sim- the sim- the sim- more simplistic or the more easy to win, can yeah. have can have uh, the dark turn. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Com- but, combats, yeah. Uh, combats are, uh, are not fielders in against the Dark Master. I mean, it's, right? It, yeah, it's it's, it's an combat, event. Uh, yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's an event in itself, ah. and um, you will be advising the rules. If you can avoid combat, then do it. If you can't, uh, then uh, it's something. It's probably something you want to fight for. Yeah, uh, exactly. And uh, I think, and, that, and, and um, if you. If you think about it, that's also what happens in all these uh, great epic fantasy sagas. You like in the Lord of the Rings, uh, the main characters are, lo- are always fleeing. They very rarely stand there and fight against the against their enemies. They they start fleeing from the Nazi. They fled all through Moria and from the Balrog. They when they fight, uh, you know, Gandalf dies, Boromir dies. So uh, spoiler alert! Yeah, I was gonna say spoilers. Yeah, spoilers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, spoilers. <laughs> also, that where there is Luke's father, you know, just in case. You know. oh. And. Um, Yes, yeah, so we wanted um, something that, that gave you that. We, wanna yeah. recre- we wanted yeah, to recreate yeah. that sort of feeling that when you are around the table and the game master says, okay, mm-hmm. there is an encounter, everybody you know, gets up on their chair and get a little bit scared because it could have mm-hmm. you know, that turn that you don't want. You know. And I think this is the kind of you know, one of those sort of games that always carries that throughout the throughout the whole campaign or whatever adventure you're doing or playing. Yeah. And so we um you know we try to recreate that I think with um, Max and you know mainly Max and also Tom um with his help they managed to uh brought that to the game. Mm. And uh, I, I think you 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 run um... Uh, a couple of com- at least one combat in the in the adventure Matt when, when you... yeah we did we did one combat uh, I don't know spoilers I don't know. the video's been out for like a year with uh, some <laughs> from some men from the north in a cabin and uh, yeah 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 and that was it for combat after that because they also learned it was like whoa this is deadly when we're rolling on tables and they're what does the table go up to on damage and crits and all that because it goes up it goes over a hundred <laughs> Yep. What does it yeah. go up to? 175 for the attack table, right? right. Yeah, yeah. And 150 for the, the critical strikes. Yes. Yeah. Mm, yeah. They're not kidding uh, when they say it's deadly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, we got but, into one combat. And it, it definitely uh, had that epic, memorable feel to it. And then after that, they were like, oh, okay, let's avoid uh, uh, that if possible. And Tomaso, yeah. who wrote the, the critical tables, uh, had a lot of fun, especially when it gets harder and what happens. He's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a question in chat that's tied to what we're mm-hmm. talking about right now. Don't worry, everybody. I'm, I am recording your questions here, and we'll get through them. Uh, they asked, is there one full table or multiple tables per body area? No. What? <laughs> no. Uh, one nice question. Uh, but there are several tables, but they are divided. But well, Tom wrote them, so yeah, uh, we we consider it briefly, uh, to be honest, uh, to have uh, separate tables for separate locations. But then again, um, the main focus of the game is not about dismembering people's uh, in, in different areas of their body. Uh, it's about taking high risks. So um, uh, critical strikes are there, uh, not because we uh, like the game to be gory. Uh, I mean, like gratuitously gory, but uh, because uh, we want the game to feel dangerous. Okay. Right. So having different uh, it strikes locations, it's like uh, uh, um, for me, it's like um, a torture porn movie. 
okay uh, we prefer to uh, have a single uh, critical strike table but we have uh, of course different types of critical strikes for different types of attacks uh, like uh, in uh, in MERP, for example yeah so if you are fighting you know with your sword you'll be dealing uh, kata damage so cut critical strike and then if you if you are using your fire magic you'll be doing fire critical strike obviously so yes the, and the then effects that, are gonna be yeah. slightly different there's also a little bit of system mastery involved huh? once you get used with the game um because different weapons uh, are dealing different damage uh on different types of armors uh, uh with various results so this makes for an interesting thing to keep into play for those people uh that's right do you like varied and unpredictable combat that's going to be different yeah. every time like hit locate well hit locations and types of damage and types of armor and things like that yes this this game is made for you there's yeah i can tell you i was going to ask you as what's changed uh since then but we'll get into that later uh yeah, because yeah. there was there was a lot of tables back then too, and I'm sure you guys have just built on it, which is which was awesome. We um, that's one few last thing about the epic fantasy. It's like uh, I was I as I was saying before, the characters in Against the Dark Master are supposed to be the heroes, not like for example in Dungeons and Dragons. That's to name the 800, maybe 800 pound gorilla yeah. uh, of RPGs. Uh, the player charters are usually adventurers. No? You know, they, they go out on an adventure often for money or for glory and stuff. But it can be heroic, but that's not the, uh, the base assumption that it's not the game. Right. While in against the Dark Master, we we want you to play heroes, so we want you to be heroic, and we see probably later what, uh, what uh, that means. And since we are talking about the epicness, you know, of the game, uh, we we also don't. Mm, by that we don't we don't mean that everything has to be you know grandiose or, uh, um, or blown up because like uh, you might have seen in the adventure of the beast of willow lake it will be the adventures of your heroes could well be uh, centered about something very small very small setting like the, the problems of a uh, a very small village, but you can be still heroic because of your action and your decision. Don't know yep. if that makes sense to you, but <laughs> yeah, no, it does. It, exactly, you nailed it. Okay, All right. and don't know if the others wanted to say anything else. So, you guys want to jump our... in and add on that, or are you satisfied with Max' uh, breakdown? Oh wow, we're getting we're getting lots of uh, we're getting lots of questions here now. All of a sudden, they said uh, your quick start guide is worth at least five bucks. They're not wrong. The quick start guide, <laughs> like how many pages are in the quick quick start guide? Like one hundred twenty. One hundred twenty. One hundred twenty. It, it is it is a beefy quick start um guide. <laughs> but so <laughs> someone said you guys you guys it's worth at least five bucks. Well, you're not wrong. It's, yeah, well, it is a quality we're, product. We're, that so we, we we wanted to you know give a, a taste of the high quality and how you know much we care and to you know provide a high quality product to whoever is interested in the game because that's also one of the main priority we have in yeah. <clears throat> developing yeah. this game. Yeah. On, on the other end, uh, some people asked us uh, if if this is the quick starter, uh, counting at uh, one hundred twenty pages. Uh, uh, what else could uh, ever be in the uh, full rules? Yes, uh, that's one of the questions. It was in chat also. Um, yeah, this is basically a full playable game. I mean, the quick start. So, uh, what will be in the full rules, uh, making it worth to uh, back the project? 
And so we come to what be being the core book. Well, there, well, hey, how, how timely, how perfect. <laughs> yeah, perfectly, perfectly timed. So basically, this. Ooh, new yeah, art. More... I love seeing new art. Whoa, 300 spells. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's basically... You guys have been busy. <laughs> yeah. More stuff, basically. Yes. Yeah. In fact, or... More stuff. If more you... stuff. More options. Yeah. We, we... The the quick start gives you the core of the game, and but we'll the core will expand on that and will give you more options, uh, like more character vocation. We we talk about them before, and some people have been asking uh, about like the champions or the doubler because they appear. I think in the quick start they they are. Uh, purposely left them uh, started mm -hmm. in the quick start without giving explanation uh, because we yeah. obviously yeah but it's a things. bit of a tease basically uh, so yeah you, you'll be getting more uh, more vocations okay we, uh, well, if, if you haven't uh, looked at the quick start yet in the quick start has uh, uh, Five, five, look, five vocation. Yeah, it's the, the warrior, the the rogue. I think they're four. They're four, yeah. Uh, five because <laughs> yeah, I, I was counting the strider that when it's oh, been eliminated. That, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There will be no strider. I don't, got got fake, no. got fired. Yeah, yeah. So Max uh, is being nostalgic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, so that's the warrior, the rogue, the wizard, and the animist. Uh, the animist is kind of like a, a druid or somewhat like a shaman. Cleric, yeah, yeah. Like a shaman so, some, something, something in between. Natural I got to explain space. what a sh what an animist uh, actually was uh, uh, last week playing uh, the game with a brand new group. And I explained it like um, uh, a mix between a druid uh, without the uh, shape changing part uh, Dungeons and Dragons are custom does too, and uh, a shaman basically. It's not a uh, the, the battle priest. Uh, no, uh, yeah, it's more like a wise man, yeah. as a healer, and a spirit caller basically. Um, but but also a powerful and versatile caster, one of my personal favorites. Yeah. So these are in the quick start, and the core rules will have the champion, which is uh, basically a, a warrior, wizard, or a paladin, you know, uh, or uh, an old the yeah, Dungeons and Dragons ranger. You you can mm -hmm. actually. Uh, develop it in different ways so you can be a champion and be more like uh, Dungeons and Dragons Paladin for example okay. or uh, build it more like uh, a ranger focusing on the outdoor and having spells that deal with that so it's a very versatile class and it obviously won't be um as good uh, as fighting directly as a warrior and won't be as good as in magic as a wizard but it's like halfway mm -hmm. there between yeah it's, and the doubler doubler is similar as a uh, sort of a jack of all trades of, of the of the game he does everything and uh, a little bit of this and a little bit of that and um, it's very it's a very particular character because it's um, also focused on on intrigue on stealth on secrets it has a, a whole spell lore dedicated to secrets so you can you can play it like a, a you know face shifting uh, spy or something something like uh, aria from game of thrones for oh, example okay cool yeah yeah uh, or or something completely different because like the champion, this two um, like hybrid 
the characters are, are very versatile and can be built in several different ways. So yeah. none of them is going to look like none of them. Yeah, you can say they are uh, like uh, advanced vocations uh, yeah. meant oh, okay. to be customized a little. Uh, they uh, they sh could be used to make up different uh, character types and concepts. Mm -mm. Uh, and that verse will be also the, the sage that we introduced to give the option of uh, limiting magic or cutting it altogether from the game. If you want to play a very low magic type of game, a very low fantasy. Interesting. Uh, You've added that option to it. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, we. Well, it's um, partially because there's a huge debate about, you know, the level of magic in like Middle Earth and Lord of the Rings. So yeah. was Gandalf a five level wizard, like I say, <laughs> or was it just a cleric with some part, with some uh, prestige class or stuff like that? So. Uh, we think that uh, the, the the great things about the role playing games is like uh, doing your own thing, uh, getting things your way. So we wanted to give you the options of uh, building your setting exactly like you want. So we 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 try to we try to give you every option possible to let you build your world basically your fantasy no that's awesome you're giving that right out of the gates you know some some companies or books might wait to do a supplement but you're giving people the tools to make it what they yeah. want yeah yeah um, we like to say that we always want to make this in the game that we want to play so right kinda, kinda mm -hmm. the, the you know think the thought behind it thought process behind it sorry max I didn't mean to interrupt you no, no, go, go on, please. No, no, I... <laughs> so there, there's, a, there's a question here. It's, it's tied to like building a game and world you want. We've got a whole bunch of questions around mechanics and stuff too that we'll get to. Um, if, if, you, if you want to uh, do some questions. Like, sure, yeah, inject... right, we'll yeah, we get to inject some questions. So there's one right now. If I want to play a dwarf-centric world, like when the humans first invaded North America, can I build a world like that without running into human-centric things? Asks Von Sater. Yes. I mean, yeah, I, I think yes. Uh, also, because um, in uh, Against the Dark Master, the kings and uh, cultures are two separate factors uh, in character building. So you can make a whole dwarven game, uh, giving uh, the dwarven king different cultures. Uh, you can have Arctic dwarves or. Uh, Dwarves living deep underground and dwarves living in the plains uh, or uh, uh, in forests uh, and so on. And uh, uh, this, I, I think you can uh, easily do this with uh, Against the Dark Master, yes. And uh, also you can add uh, in uh, humans uh, as the invading race and... Uh, Maybe they're the bad guys after all. Yeah, oh. you, uh, I, I, I think we, we, we usually do uh, when we, um, we, we have done like, you, you know, human only games mm -hmm. with, uh, against the Dark Master, but it, it, it will basically work with, with any other king. Also, the, we didn't, we didn't, I think it's safe to say that we didn't build the game around one specific king. Right. It was, uh, it was more like, uh, you know, king are part of the game and, and this is hard to get. So it's not definitely human centric. Gotcha. No, no. So, so this uh, feel of um, uh, multicultural friendship uh, in the genre, you know. Uh, like uh, if you think uh, Lord of the Rings, Rings, but also uh, uh, other classic days of epic fantasy, uh, the eponymous uh, fellowship uh, is made of uh, hobbits and elves and dwarves and humans alike. And uh, we really wanted to uh, put this in our game. 
Yeah, that, that, that's why we we decided to call them kings, you know, because yeah. of the sense of kingship. Right. Um, how, so <clears throat> you guys do have a, a default setting that you're setting this world in. It, how defined is it going to be in the book? And are you going to provide tools to flesh out that world in the core book? Okay, there's no explicit setting in Against the Dark okay. Master. There's not um, a, a word of against the Dark Master, but there is a very implicit one, you know, uh, like we said before, uh, we're trying to emulate a very particular subgenre of fantasy. So you'll you'll be able to play in any kind, in any fantasy world you want. Basically, you, you can do your your own setting and we'll be giving you tools to do, to do that. But the premise is that this is a game of epic fantasy. So whatever you do, uh, your world is going gonna, is gonna to have, your, your campaign is going to have a certain feel to it. And this is um, something that is ingrained in the rules. The rules will uh, try to help you uh, get that uh, get that feel, that get um, uh, have make your make your stories and your adventure uh, like those in the in those epic fantasy sagas like Wheel of Time, Shannara, Lord of Rings, and such. Okay, we. So are there are there characters and factions? We know there's the Dark Master. So there's I'm assuming there's gonna be a write up on the Dark Master and their drive and all that. Are there you mentioned kingdoms and such? Are there gonna be? Do you have NPCs and people in this, or that's just up to you? You here's the world, here's the setting, and you create it and you fill it with whatever you want. Or do you already have some of that kind of set out for folks who who want to play in a against the Dark Master default world? Okay. Um... No, the, the, in in the adventure, we 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 give some suggestions and yep. we drop some names, we name some factions, some NPCs, but most for most part, we we leave it um, just as that as a cool. suggestion, basically. So uh, we name like the nine kingdoms. We name. Uh, the Elven Kingdom of Grid Covert or the World Territories. But they're, if you're running the game, they're yours to do whatever you want with them. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, there's the no meta plot, there's no yeah. canon. You will see lots of this in the, in the full rules. Um, we will drop uh, here and there some uh, lore, uh, like. Uh, character names, uh, place names, uh, and uh, uh, short hints uh, to give the, the game uh, the mood uh, we want to convey, you know. Uh, but there's not uh, no specific setting linked to Dark Master. So, so maybe yeah, it'll be like... the next Kickstarter is a, is a, is a world-setting book. Just, just saying, just throwing it out there. <laughs> we're, we're considering this. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. cool. So the setting, it's there for you to play with. You guys hint at things, you drop names, you drop places, and it's up to you. If you want to use it, you can, and you want to flesh it out, you can, but um, you're free to create whatever you want. Okay, cool. Yep. Yeah. Uh, oh, and... Oh, well, we, we had a slide on this, but I forgot to <laughs> oh. <laughs> go forward. <laughs> so, yeah, here... Basically, that's uh, that's what I was was I talking about before. The various rules that will help you get the these epic stories in your adventure. So uh, the uh, the the characters. The uh, if you look in the quick start rules, you'll see that they're limited to level ten. Mm -hmm. And many people ask us on the forums or emails uh, if the core core book is going to go beyond that. 
And the answer is basically yes and no. Oh. <laughs> it, is, it, <laughs> it is weird, I know, but... Um, <laughs> and so, uh, to make it short, basically, the being a hero is also sort of um, breaking your limits, you know, uh, going uh, above them and uh, uh, stepping stepping over your limits. So we've um, uh, in we have made some mechanics that will help you shape your character like that. So okay. that's the this if you remember in the game, if there are drive points. You know, they just, you can spend, they are like, like a meta currency, you can spend to have re-rolls uh, mm-hmm. and uh, change uh, the result of your, you know, save yourself from a bad critical strike uh, and save your life, for example. And um, you gain them by performing certain actions that are usually heroic action or are actions that follow your own um, character passions and uh, basically by spending them uh, you uh, walk along the this heroic path of your character and there will be milestones that are um, uh, that you will reach after a certain number of uh, drive points spent so the more heroic deeds you you perform the more you will go along this heroic path of your character and this milestone will allow you to break uh, uh, your limits so to go over what your charlatan could normally do so you will rise your stats you will be able to uh, go beyond uh, your normal level limits uh, and gain special abilities basically okay so, um, so that that's that, that's one of the way that we are um, uh, we, we're trying to convey this this epic mood, you know, like the classic farm boy that uh, slowly grows into the hero of the prophecy, you know, and discover that his war, the disorder that he inherited from his father, is the master sword that will defeat the dark master uh, this is all um, uh, mm, this is all boiled down in in, in this uh, ingrained in these rules that right. will, uh... so magic rituals is a thing on there someone is asking about the casting system they asked how developed is the casting system and i know that's a broad <laughs> that's a broad question but do you guys want to yeah. quickly touch on the casting system like like there is with weapons and armor, where you're rolling on multiple tables, and depending on the type of weapon and the damage, is there something similar to magic? Are you rolling on multiple tables yeah. depending on what type of spell you're using, uh, and then what type of armor you're up against or your opponent? Yeah, you. Uh, we we have um, our magic system is based on uh, magic points, uh, which is which are spent to cast spells, of course. So it's not a uh, like uh, Dungeons and Dragons Vention Magic, uh, but more uh, like uh, you can use the same spell more and more uh, as long as you have magic points to cast spells. And then the, uh, the, the whole thing is like um, if your spell uh, is not an attack spell, basically, but an utility spell, it will probably simply uh, take effect, and uh, and that's it. Uh, if you're if you're trying to um, use your spell uh, against uh, an unwilling target, then the the, the target uh, will get to resist the spell, mm-hmm. and you will roll uh, uh, on a certain table to see uh, basically the target number for this. Uh, we call them. Uh, safe rolls and uh, and then there are uh, elemental attack spells like uh, fireballs, lightning bolts and so on and those uh, yes they have their own attack tables and nasty critical strikes nice 
So a um, well-developed spell system, <laughs> I'd yeah. say, to answer the question. Is there a system in there to make your own spells? Are there the options for that? Kind of, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Kind. Kind. Uh, it's, it's part of the heroic path. We, okay. We, I always told him before, you, you, you can use it to, to create your own spell. And even spells that goes beyond the limits of normal spells. So you will be making your own uh, legendary spells, basically. Cool. All right. Oh, yeah. Like a, a, an entire campaign can be focused on uh, researching and performing a, a particular magical ritual. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Also, you have uh, the, the chance to uh, spell with uh but the spell warping you you can enhance yeah. your spells so uh in some way uh you can make your signature spell and uh customize uh your spell casting mm -hmm. abilities yeah but don't forget the, that guy over here that you yeah. can see on the slides that's, that's always and, lurking that's anytime always anytime, anytime when, uh, you're casting a spell the dark master watches and yeah, that, that is, um, there's a real risk of attracting the Dark Master's uh, attention. Wanted attention, yeah, definitely. Every time you, you cast a spell. So that's cool, that, that danger is always lurking there. So it's, <clears throat> that's an economy in itself in the game then, right? Like, you can't just willy-nilly be casting spells yeah. everywhere because you're going to gain the attention of the Dark Master. By yeah, the way, yeah. I've been waiting to say, that, that image, that is a loving tribute to the Black Cauldron right there, and I want that on a t-shirt. That is <laughs> awesome picture. Okay. Yeah, well, one of my players in particular was uh, made particularly aware then, because she basically always each session at least once attracted the dark master attention. what <laughs> every session every session uh, yeah every session she managed to uh while casting a spell uh, uh you have to roll a double on your uh, the hundred roll to okay have a chance to attract the dark master attention and so she chances it, are high yeah yeah, but it's like a ten percent, right? Okay, because you're rolling a percentile, D one hundred, right? Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. if you roll doubles, if you roll uh, the same number on both dice, whatever the spell is successful or not, there's a chance the dark master will notice uh, you uh, meddling with things that you should not. <laughs> that you just don't understand. <laughs> yeah. And so your player you, uh, was constantly uh, calling for the dark master, like yeah. a push notification on, on his mobile. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dark master was like, oh no, <laughs> not again. Push notification on dark master. Okay, so another big trope of fantasy is travel. Yeah. yeah, you know, if you watch uh, like Peter Jackson, <laughs> Peter oh, yeah, Jackson. just shot after shot of them going through fields, <laughs> climbing mountains, going through streams. Yep, travel, big part of it. <laughs> and we wanted to make it part of our game too. So, in we have travel rules uh, that are not just you know, um, a simple uh okay we are going to the dragon mountain so it's uh, 10 days of rations okay we we are here we will just roll a couple of random encounter and we'll be there we want them um, we wanted to have each of this travel a very big um, adventure so we have tried to uh, make uh, these travel rules help you to craft uh, uh, improvise adventures whenever your characters are traveling across the country for their happy quest basically will there be random encounter tables in um, for that end outside of <laughs> travel rules uh you I, I mean in um, in the travel rules we uh, we we made some random uh, exam table of examples of what we call hazards that are basically these encounters but 
uh, a hazard could be an encounter with um, uh, with someone, you know, with an NPC mm-hmm. or with opponents, but could also be just like uh, bad weather right. or some natural obstacles. So lots of different things. Yeah. And cool. and yes, per 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 fail will be in the core rules. So yeah, we'll... but but it's not like uh, I mean um, travel. It's not like exploring uh, on an uh, on an X crawl. Um, yeah. We don't uh, we don't want this uh, kind of feel uh, to the game. Um, traveling in Dark Master is like uh, going from A to B um, through a series of possible hazards. And so, uh, even if the travel itself uh, is uh, linear, uh, it's what's happening during the travel uh, that matters. The, the stakes and the risks that the, the, the characters will encounter during the travel. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what we uh, we call by my, my travel rules and not like uh, exploration because yeah. exploration is a big part of like uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Yep. But uh, since we are trying to emulate these epic sagas, usually travel there is always. Uh, uh, always has a purpose. You're always traveling toward a very specific destination. It's not a, it's about getting lost uh, during the next crawl. It's uh, yeah. you should if you begin traveling, you will surely you will probably uh, end yeah. up where you wanted to be. Uh, yeah, you, you, you could get lost. You could get yeah. lost. <laughs> it's Actually, possible, but uh, okay. To get lost. Cool. That was one of the questions somebody had. Better suited to a hex crawl or uh, like a linear travel system. So this is more yeah. of a, a linear travel system, but you linear are going to encounter things along the way. If, okay. If you are familiar with the concept of uh, like uh, point crawl, it, it's uh, something like that. Okay. So You made it up. Point crawl. <laughs> huh? Admit it. You made it up on the fly. No. That's a max no. original check, right check there. It yeah, no, no. Check, check, check it out. It's That's basically... Old point crawl. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very right. so it's, I didn't it's, know. Cool. So the travel rules sound awesome. Safe havens. Is that? I can't remember the name of it. Is that where like where they go to like meet Elrond in Lord of the Rings, similar Elrond. to that? Like, yeah. yeah. Exactly. That, What's the name exactly. of that place? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> can't remember. Okay. Rivendell. 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 Thank you. Yeah. I don't remember that. I remember Elrond's name, but I can't remember Rivendell. Uh, so there'll be uh, safe, safe havens scattered across the world. Yeah. There's um, one in, in Willow, Beast of Willow Lake, isn't there? Maybe not. Maybe sorry? Crazy. In, in Willow Lake? Uh, there's one mentioned, maybe. There's <laughs> one mentioned, I think. Yeah, yeah. probably, yes. And, um, yeah, Safe Heaven will be places like Halron's House or, like, Lorien or place where, obviously, the character will be safe. They are, like, uh, bastions of light against the coming darkness or places that I've never been touched, and hopefully will never be by the Dark Master. And they be really helpful during travels, but will also be kind of some kind of home base for the characters. So in safe heavens, you won't only be able to rest and heal or recuperate your strength, but you'll always meet important NPCs and you'll be able to uh, perform certain downtime downtown activities like cool. training or uh, you know studying researching and stuff like that so you can so, never truly let up your guard until you're in one of these safe havens when you're yeah, traveling away. Yeah. yeah cool there's always that threat the dark master looming over mm-hmm. exactly yes and finally, you can see the over big trope of epic fantasy is obviously war. There's always a war going on, and it's not just a couple of skirmish, you know, against uh, a, an orc or two, but it's usually armies clashing yeah. One, yeah. one against the other. And we'll we'll have those in uh, in the core rules. We'll have rules to to handle uh, scenes like the um, uh, the two towers, you know, the um, 
the siege of Isengard, uh, yeah. of Isengard, of um, how, 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 uh, what was it called, man? Uh, Tom. At, at the end yeah. of the, the third book? Yeah. Uh, yeah the he, second he... book. The... Oh. The Helm? Helm's, Helm's, Helm's Deep. Helm's oh, wow, we Deep. all forgot Helm's that. Deep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so... Uh, yeah, so we'll we'll have the rules to to handle things like that. That okay. won't be, you know, um, a Warhammer uh, style. You will not be moving armies around the tables. Not will be a miniature games, but no. it will be something fo always focused on the heroes and what gotcha. they do to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, the, the the battles and war uh, will always be in the background. Uh, the heroes will be uh, acting on the foreground, and their action and their actions will be uh, those that really impact uh, the the ends uh, of a war. Gotcha. So, Kaiju Stu just asked, uh, and are are any rules resolving mass combat going to be included? either in the background or with the characters involved. So you guys kind of touched on that, but the characters involved, the focus will be on yeah. them, but will yeah, there also the be rules for kind of playing out what's happening behind them as well? Uh, basically the characters are always the, the focus. So okay. what happens in the background depends on what they do. Yeah. But they're the heroes, so they, it, it's, a, it's basically uh, up to them what, uh, will happen if if their forces will win if they lose if the if the casualties that uh, that will be high win, yeah or uh, it's it will depend on their choices it's not um, we're not trying to simulate a, a, a proper a proper battle or proper, gotcha. uh, a proper war okay. It's more okay. implied. It's there. It's happening. But it's not okay. Yeah, Should we, so. uh, let's do some, a few more questions and we'll jump on to the next yeah. slide. Okay. Uh, oh, so there please. was a, Go on with the questions. Uh, there was a, there was a question about the rolling mechanics. I guess some folks who are new to this, they want to know what does the rolling mechanics look in this game? Do you want to give them just a brief overview? It's a, it's a D 100 that you're going to be rolling for yeah. most checks. Um, but then it goes from there. You can have degrees of success and failure, right? Do you guys want to get into that briefly? Yeah, you basically the um, the main rules. The, the, what what you want is you roll your dice. So you want to roll high, basically. You roll dice and you add your skill or your bonus to to it. And the higher it is, the better it is. Uh, there are several degrees. There are some degrees of failure and of success. So you can roll and get uh, success on your on your action and so basically you'll be getting whatever you wanted to get uh, you can get uh, like a critical success so you will perform even better than what you hope <clears throat> uh, or you could get a partial success so you this means that will be a there will be a complication you'll um, uh, you'll get what you want but Will you will suffer something? Yeah, will, there will be a price for that, yeah. or you will get only partially what the uh, part of what you were uh, looking to achieve. And obviously, you could fail or critically fail. So you'll <laughs> you not only won't get what uh, what you were trying to achieve, but you will also pay an additional price for that. You can <laughs> roll under a hundred uh, under zero. Yeah. yeah, you can roll under zero. That's, and that is mechanic good. in this. And you can roll it's, over 100. Yeah. You can roll yeah. over 100 and, and roll under zero. And the rolling under zero is generally not good. It is brutal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is terrible. <laughs> it's terrible if yeah. it happens to your character. If it happens to an yeah, NPC, but, then it's great. But also, <laughs> yeah. but also uh, um, from a, a, a game design perspective, yeah. uh, we try to keep in mind the fade forward principle uh, while writing the, the rules for Dark Master. Um, I mean, um, uh, a partial success uh, or any degree of failure 
uh, will generally not be uh, simply failing at something and not being able to perform a task. Right. It will be like uh, sending the story in a different direction uh, from what the player intended to send it. But uh, the story will still keep moving on. Uh, and maybe, uh, or perhaps uh, often, uh, failing at something uh, will be as interesting as uh, such hitting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, there's been lots of questions about the Kickstarter and questions around that. We'll wait. We'll hold off on that. We won't answer those. Don't worry, people. They're yeah. coming. I'm writing down your questions about the Kickstarter and yeah. uh, stretch goals and stuff. Uh, there's questions about monsters, but I think that's going to be on the next slide. So... Monsters? Like that? Okay. Yeah. We have monsters. If, we if we have the monsters. questions. So yes, we have monsters. We got monsters. <laughs> they asked about any plans for virtual tabletop support like Roll20. Well, I can tell you that one of the players in our game, Wes, who is currently in the chat right now, uh, created a character sheet for Roll20, and he's continuing to work on it, and the plan is to make it available to everybody. Um, that, further... That's... Support for virtual West. tabletops. Yeah, good job, Wes. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's amazing yeah, that, what he did. Really a lot right. of work. Like, really yeah, amazing. So. Uh, so that is happening. Uh, I don't know if you guys have any other further support outside of that, but there is a character sheet. It's a we work released, in progress, uh, but it will be available first, to everybody. Yeah. We 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 released some tokens for oh, okay. Mind Uh They are uh, on. You're available on Roll Twenty. Yeah. As it, as they're available about, on um, Drive Store RPG. Oh, a drive yeah. Through. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we live in different cities or even in different countries. countries. So we, yeah, countries. So, 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 we, so we use Roll20 and other virtual tabletops to, to, to play. So we will definitely be doing something, something for those. So, yeah, so we, we, they will be supported. Nice. That's awesome. Wes and Chat's like, that guy needs to get to work. Yeah, Wes, you gotta. <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of people looking for that character sheet uh, soon. Yes. Now you said it. <laughs> <laughs> That's Wes. The, by the way, folks are in chat. Grumpy Baker's Wes. And yeah, you'll see this character sheet in action. You can watch on our old playthroughs. It's awesome. Yeah. We put so yeah. much work into it. Yeah, I've seen in, in your uh, playthrough of the Beast of Willow Lake. Yeah. Uh, really incredible what uh, it's basically or uh, everything was uh automated right in in, uh, in that yeah uh, he built the screen. tables in the back end and it was all automated if you rolled high it would ask you to roll on the next table up and t tell you the type of damage versus the type of armor it was oh it's insane what he yeah. did this kind of e-tools are really a plus for a game like dark master because we have uh, sometimes uh, big numbers to add, uh, lots of tables to look upon, and uh, that uh, it's big aid for the game. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, As the guy who ran it, it was a big help for me um, having those <laughs> tables built in there. So monsters, monsters, creatures, monsters bad guys, creatures, bad guys. Yeah, but the first thing is you. Um, uh, in the rules, will give you the a way to create your own dark master. As we said before, yes. uh, in against the dark master, we want to give you the option to create your own setting and your own world, and that includes dark master. So, uh, we'll give you examples of uh, possible different dark master, and each of it. Each of them will feel different and will have an impact on your campaign and on the game world. So basically, one Dark Master will be commanding like an horde of undead and have powers that will make uh, healing more difficult or the uh, more difficult to find food or forage while you're traveling the wilderness. Another could be you know, command could be a, a dragon queen commanding these uh, uh, hordes of dragons and dragon men, you know, that's, uh, and um, injecting awesome. their elemental that... power in, in, in their in her uh, servants. So each of them will, will feel different. So each campaign will have a different mood and different feeling, depending also depending on the dark master you'll be against. Too. 
That's really cool. Uh, I did not know you guys were including that. That's awesome. That you can also make your own, not just the the skull with the antlers. You can you can no. design no. your own dark master for your own world. That's really cool. And the dark master will influence the game in other ways, apart from the um, spying on the trackers when they cast magic, because it's, it's a creep that likes spying on uh, on magic user apparently, and. Mm, he will always bestow um, forbidden magic uh, and forbidden spell lords to his minions. So dark mages and other minions of the dark master will have um, access to uh, evil uh, spells and forbidden rituals that the players won't have access to. Okay. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, the, um, uh, there also the possibility your characters will be tainted by or seduced in part by the Dark Master, like you borrow mirror in the Lord of the Rings. Uh, obviously, you could redeem yourself in various ways. Oh, I was just going to ask, so is there lasting effects and can you reverse those effects? That yeah, taint? So okay. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, up to a certain point, of course. Then it will be too late. Yeah. <laughs> then you succumb to the Dark Master. <laughs> awesome. Oh, that's really cool. Um, I did not know you guys were working on that. I'm that really excites me, that aspect of it. You can really make this your own. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so then you've got a bestiary of over 50 creatures, and they all have their own illustrations, which is important. Yeah. yeah. I'd say. And someone had asked earlier if there was rules to create your own monsters. So there you go. That answers that as well. <laughs> so oh. yeah, well, yes to both. Yeah, you 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 can. You got a, a lot of uh, monsters already in the core books, but you'll be able to create your own uh, with their own powers, their own uh, abilities, and we're. We're, we're trying to we're, we're trying to make a uh, monster and opponents creation very quick so you if you want you you could build them like characters if you are like building the one of the big bosses of your campaign and you want to to build like the um, the evil wizard or something like that you can build them like characters but huh. it's usually too time consuming. For, for the game master, especially if you are preparing like a, a horde of adversaries for your for your players. So we also given uh, rules that will make building track um, opponents much easier and much quicker. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Were there, were, were there other questions about the opponents or the... That was the gist opponent? of the questions on the um, bestiary. All right, all right. I said it wrong. Bestiary, bestiary. <laughs> um, <laughs> getting a hard time in chat. No, that was the questions uh, revolving around the uh, the bad guys in okay. the bestiary. Thank you, Alpha. <laughs> Okay, but they're so... it's full of beasts. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, should we uh, next slide? Why? Right. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. Ooh. Then let's, I... so oh, some new new quests, some new adventures there. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Will <clears throat> the Shadow of the Northern Woods campaign that will be included in the in the core book? We'll, we'll be putting it in to, all together with the rules at, well, to the end of the rules to be specific. Um, it's what uh, the first part you can al uh, already download it from our website and Matt uh, already ran that. That's our, right. Beast of Willow Lake is available for Beast free right now Lake. on the website and uh, you can watch our playthrough. Of it. The other parts will be included in the in the core book, and the second part, the Winds of Four. Uh, I think we can say now that we Matt will be running it on uh, on this channel. 
uh, later on during the Kickstarter campaign. That's... So you will you'll get to see what happens. You'll get after... to see yes the next chapter of the Shadow chapter. of the Northern Woods uh, campaign. The cats yeah. of the bag. We're playing again. I'm, I've reached out to most of the players, and I want to get the the original crew back to pick up their players and or characters, and uh, we'll pick up where we left off and continue our playthrough. That would be awesome. Cool. Yeah, we um, uh, we try to give the adventure a very classic fantasy feel. So if you've seen the first part of uh, Right Through It, you'll see it's a very small village, a classic. Um, uh, isolated, uh, you know, homeless like the uh, like those you'll find basically in in, in most of the uh, where, where most of the epic sagas begins. You know, they're, they're almost always begin in these small towns in the mm -hmm. middle of nowhere, and shadow of the northern woods will be just like that, and. <clears throat> will um, it's it's setting neutral I mean, I mean there are places and names but we have tried to to keep it as neutral as possible so you can just take willow lake and drop it whenever wherever you want if you run want to run it on middle earth you can run the middle or in the forgotten realms in dragon lands with minimum <clears throat> adaptation and <clears throat> uh, we've tried to keep each part um, uh, connected, but also uh, runnable as a standalone adventure. So you can just use part of it. You can just use the, the second or the third part or just the first. Uh, or yeah, run if you want to just like inject it in your ongoing campaign, you want a quick little pre-built adventure that doesn't take more than a few sessions they're there like beast will like work very well for that like if we never got to the other chapters it, it does have a you know a beginning middle and end but there is that 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 looming overarching story is there and hinted at <clears throat> yeah and uh well we, we you you'll see matt <laughs> all right i'm looking forward to it. i haven't seen it yet i'm looking forward to seeing the next chapter <laughs> the the title winds of war uh -oh. And some and some of the uh, I, I think I think we we, we gave some um, anticipation in in, in at, at the end of the of the first part we we we, we said what was coming. Yeah, I have a pretty good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you see what 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 will happen in Winds of War. Awesome. <clears throat> so there's uh, there's a big announcement number one. We're gonna have exclusive adventure. That's not available just yet, uh, being live played on the channel here during the Kickstarter campaign for Against the Dark Master. Yep. Yep. And I don't know if there are other questions. I think the next part of mm -hmm. the of the slides are going to be about the, the book itself. And okay. we're going to look more on what will happen during the Kickstarter let's do it so, this is what that's what people want it. there's some <laughs> questions about the book how big so i, I everything's gonna be in there it's gonna be an all-in-one book um similar to Zweihander. Yeah. you're gonna have all of the tools you need in one book yeah exactly what, what's the page count gonna clock in at out of curiosity oh, oh is that on here no okay. yeah we have next i think in the next few okay it's coming you don't have to answer. if it's coming up yeah. you say hey just wait <laughs> just wait matt it's coming <laughs> um okay so it's an all-in-one book that was a question i assumed it would be uh which is good. Ooh, what are some of the stretch goals? That was asked earlier, and I saw stretch goals was up on the screen. <laughs> do you wanna... Stretch goals, yeah. What? Well, we're gonna get to that. We'll do the digital downloads first. <laughs> no, I, I, I whatever order we, you guys want to go. You, you, I you think we we don't have the stretch goal on on the slides, right? We're we're definitely gonna be stretch goals. Yeah, we will. Yeah. Right now, we we um, wanna keep them uh, in the, like, in the campaign. <laughs> now there, there are gonna be some adventure by uh, some really talented uh, writer. Oh, and, yeah. And the, 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 the stretch call are juicy. Let's say that. Okay. <laughs> so there's okay. Yeah, so you're hinting at a a a, a well-known author. 
uh, uh, produce, a possibly producing a uh, an adventure. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, well, we you'll see. We, we won't okay. be, you'll, you'll how, see, you'll don't see. want to to spoil things. All much. right, you can't give it away. How, okay, how about this question? Fonz asked a couple times, "Who's the publisher? Is it a big book house or a uh, small independent?" Who, curious. Um, we we are open on the games. So we are the publisher. We are the publisher. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, we have a we have a full uh, creative uh, freedom. We, as we said, we have no oversight but ourselves. And um, we have no um, uh, constraints or anything that tells us, you know, to adapt to a certain type of market. We make the game we like. We make the game we want to play. And I think that comes off from the quick start rules already. And that's going to be our philosophy going on when we try to... I have read most of the game is already but basically. So that's the philosophy we use. And Max, which is the main writer, uh, game designer, um, so uh, there's no big big company behind us. We are our shoulder are carrying everything. All right, so they are doing it, self-publishing themselves with their their company. Yeah. Uh, distribution America will be limited? Question mark. W will it be limited? Will it be only for the United States? That's the question. Yes. Will distribution in America the, the, will be limited? As of right now, we we are um, yes, we will distribute in North America and rest of the world according to the you know the uh, cost cost of shipping. So. Are you using print on demand via um, drive through RPG, or are going to use other sources? No, 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 no. It's not oh. gonna be. It's gonna be um, high quality offset print. Oh. I think it's the. I think there it's even in the next slide, right? Okay. Like, all right. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I'll, I'll hold. I'll hold okay. up. <laughs> nobody, nobody, no, no, nobody bothers about digital downloads. So they are everywhere. So yeah, yeah. The skip them. Skip them. Yeah, we can skip them. <laughs> there are people, but uh, yeah, they're there. <laughs> okay, so it's all gonna be done via drive through RPG, which is the industry standard. It's good. Well, yeah. use it, and it'll be there. Printer friendly. You're gonna have high res and low res. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, of course. Search fully searchable, indexed. I I was yep. watching a Discord the other day. Not not uh -huh. uh, the Grim Perils one, but a different Discord that I belong to, and people were blowing up about a PDF not being searchable and not being indexable. And so there you no, go. No, no, no. It's gonna, There's it's gonna yeah, be... the PDFs will be will be made up with uh, actual digital use in mind. I mean, playing with uh, your tablet or phone or laptop uh, and uh, skimming through the books uh, easily. Okay, good. That's important. So, and that's important for like folks like me who run online because I'm going to search yeah. keywords and stuff. So that's awesome that that's going to be integrated and available in there. And also, you know, we, we, that's the new market. That I mean, there's a new wave, way to use the game. Mostly that you bring the PDF with you, you use on a tablet. It's yep. easier. And... Um, and so Especially with you, boom, everything boom, is going to be designed with, as Tomas said, everything is going to be um, designed with uh, user digital user experience in mind as well yep. as you know the touch and feel <laughs> experience that we all love. Yeah, and as a bonus, the PDFs and downloads will be fulfilled by drive through RPG, so yeah. awesome. it's a guarantee of you're getting uh, you're getting quality. thanked in the chat right now. For putting in the extra work on those PDFs. Oh, yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Six hundred plus pages. Whoa. Oh. Okay. <laughs> People want to know about the big heavy book, and that's it. Yeah, it's big. <laughs> it's heavy. This is another Zweihander. This is going to be a, yeah. a huge, yeah. massive tome. We have. Um... Yeah, six hundred plus pages counting. <laughs> yeah, and, at some uh, point we we considered splitting the book in two parts, uh, into soft cover books and maybe making a box and set. But it's uh, in the end we discarded the idea and went for the bl full blown heavy hardcover book. But it doesn't mean that in the future maybe there's going to be a special edition. <laughs> Who knows? There you go. <laughs> Who knows that? Uh, um, uh, so yes, six six hundred plus pages, uh, which basically are uh, written already by by Max. So everything it's um, the, the the bulk of the work it's already be done. We um, 
But once we got to the Kickstarter, which helps to, the, to shorten the, the time between the production and distribution. That, so it's not going to be years of distribution, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, that's that's an important thing to note here. And that's why I spoke we to these guys all, earlier in the year. We are and all, as I said before, we all are players. Also, yeah. we are, you know, serial baker Kickstarter. So we know the the... the uh, worries that each baker has. In yeah, yeah, we know your pain of waiting. The pain of waiting, 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 and waiting and waiting. So we've got, we, um, everything is going to be uh, uh, pro with the projects in mind we have. It's all, you know, for uh, give the best experience and the fastest, highest quality possible. Yeah. So, uh, to the to the um, yeah, well, whatever we can control uh, is already basically is already done. So yes, so, so now the writing is done and the art, for the most part, or is it done? Is it for, in the, mo for the most part? For, for the, the most, most part, part, part it's done. done. Must be, yeah. You guys, you guys are doing it right. Gonna be a nice yes, quick yes, turnaround maybe, time here. Uh, you know, we want to we want to start the Kickstarter with uh, only worrying about the Kickstarter. Um, yeah. So we don't have, you know, then, you know, so we know what our limits and we know what we're aiming for. So. Very smart. And as I said, as I mentioned before, of course, it's going to be high quality half set print. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the, the highest uh, industry you can get. Um, I mean, the uh, high quality standard in the industry. Um, we went for um, a lot of size, uh, 8 by 5, 8.5 8 by 11. Um, the standard that would fit any <laughs> backpack <laughs> we yeah. go and play also, around. Give, gives uh, lots of room for uh, yeah, exactly. Work. Exactly, and uh, and also this type of format that allows them not to cluster the page with you know artwork and text walls. So everything is going to be nice and harmonious and 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 um, pleasing to the eye. If we can say it this way. Good Hopefully so. Good to hear. Hopefully so, yes. So <laughs> Hopefully so. <laughs> the, 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 the job of the, the whoever is sticking to the layout. I don't know who's going to do that, but... <laughs> um, also, yes. Um, fully illustrated. I don't know, Tom, maybe you want to say something. Yeah, fully illustrated. We already talked about this, but it's uh, worth uh, repeating. Uh, we will have lots of artwork uh, from very talented fantasy artists. Uh, you already saw some of them on our website and on the Quick Start rules. Uh, uh, we have uh, Marcin Scholny, which is a nice guy from Poland. Uh, and then we have Geraldo, a guy from Argentina, very talented, really. And some other artists, so you you have to wait for the book and crack it open to look at those gorgeous I think, artwork. I think in the in the blog we already have some uh, interview. Some yeah, yeah in, in the blog we have some interviews with uh, some of these uh, artists. Yeah. But uh, yeah. then again, we will have uh, also some more. And also, if the Kickstarter uh, goes well, uh, like we hope, uh, we will have probably uh, additional artwork. Oh, there you go. That's a bowl, another a stretch bowl. goal hint. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> is the art... Nerds. The art on the interior, is it all going to follow the black and white uh, that we've seen already? Absolutely. Awesome. Yes. I, I like also... I'm a fan of the black and white oh. art. It suits what you guys are going for. The tone. Pitching to the choir. Yeah. <laughs> The, the only uh, color, full color artwork will be the uh, the cover, yeah. uh, which we already spoiled. It will be uh, it, it is by a renowned uh, Italian pro fantasy artist Andrea Piparo, uh, which is also a big fan uh, of uh, Tolkien and epic fantasy. And uh, as you can see, uh, I think it captured the spirit of the game and the mood of the game very well. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, but maybe we will also have, uh, you know, maybe like a variant covers uh, or something oh. like that. We'll see. Depending on stretch goal again? Depending on <laughs> stretch goals, uh, maybe. Or stars. Or... Cool. <laughs> awesome.
And then, of course, the Shadows of Northern Woods, those three adventures, yeah. will be included in the book. Yeah. We'll be included in the book. We thought uh, for a while uh, of releasing it as a separate booklet, uh, but it will have uh, costed uh, so much more. Uh, we prefer to spend all uh, the, the most part of the budget of the campaign in delivering a single uh, kick-ass book. Yeah. Nice. I'm excited. Also, it would be, <clears throat> yeah. Also, it would be easier to just carry them around all together, or you without having different books, multiple books. Yeah. 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 Is, there, is there any question about? <clears throat> so there is a question about if you're gonna have any add-ons. Uh, like someone said that he got decks for the Zweihander, like magic and things like that. Do you guys plan on producing decks for monsters and magic and things, decks of cards? Well, um, we'll have something like that. Oh, I was going to ask what I, I was going to ask for the Game Master screen because <laughs> I'm a big fan of those and I always buy them whenever they're available. Uh, yes, so we're going to have, um, as you know, the picture is pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, we're going to have the the classic four, uh, you know, um, panel foldable screen uh, with the artwork um, of the cover full you know full color and um, with the main uh, most used uh, tables that you you know just like a, <laughs> I'm not bragging on anything here just like any other <laughs> uh, than um, master screen but also we're gonna it's gonna be of course fully printable high quality and it's gonna be attached to uh, coming it will come with it at um, about 24 pages um, uh, booklet that um it's gonna be it's gonna have the rest of the of the um, tables for you to use and that's a, um that's awesome. it's gonna be you know it's gonna be a great tool uh when and great aid especially for consider all the the heavy amount of table we're gonna have on the i agree so, thank you uh, <laughs> i thank you as a game master for doing this <laughs> to, to answer your specific question about uh card decks uh, and the like um well against the dark master actually um, um will not make great use of uh cards uh, and the like because um of the structure of the game itself um you already saw in the quick start rules uh, each spell lore uh, fits on a uh, on a single sheet, and uh, uh, maybe uh, all you will need uh, will be printed uh, on a cardboard and laminated like uh, we did uh, for our uh, playtest games, and that's pretty much uh, anything you will like. Okay. <clears throat> also, we, since this is our first Kickstarter, we wanted to keep it simple. So to be sure that we can deliver what we promise. So we'll be focusing on the book mainly and uh, yeah. like add-ons like, like, like this game master screen. So things that are uh, necessary for the game. Well, as Max said, we are we are very well full aware of the horror stories of some certain Kickstarter, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and so we're gonna try to keep it as simple as possible. But you know, um, this is our first, and this is just a door that we open into the you know whatever's gonna come next. So we wanna start well and good. And, so if you uh, want more people, support them, and you'll get more stuff. Yeah. We, we we want we really want to focus on the the main product right. uh, and if we can spoil a little if uh, our stretch goals uh, will basically be about adding more content to the game okay instead of producing uh, uh, diverse items okay. Which is great. Hey, adding more um, to the, to what you're getting. What everybody's buying. But everybody's buying that book. So stretch goals are going to be tied to just adding on to that core product. Yeah. Okay. So I think we, if there are no more questions, <coughs> I think we can proceed to the final part. 
Oh, is this, is this the big? Oh, yeah. cool. animated. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, the yeah, but there's no more left to say, basically. So. <laughs> Let's go straight to the point. Uh, we, we we're talking around for uh, around an hour, but yeah. basically, oh, Max, I can't go on. Yeah, I, th I think the it's a video, so you have to. Yeah, it's a video. Okay. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> this is the color logo. You. There's been a huge debate about the <laughs> color or, or black and yeah, white. Color black and yeah. white. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, you guys put it on Twitter. You did a, a vote. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I was I was a black and white vote. Vote. It's okay. It's you okay. you were for black and white. Yeah, we we feel undecided about this. <laughs> actually, we like them both. Yeah, yeah. We like them both. I've got the yeah. black and white one up on the stream right now. No. Will there be a video game? Someone asks. Oh, that would be a dream for you guys, wouldn't it? <laughs> See your product. We'd love to video game. start to do if, something if you, and do some yeah, work. Yeah. Yeah. If you are a video game developer and want to reach out to make a Night in Dark Master video game, well, we were we are all for it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We're all gamers, so. Okay, so if there are any other questions, <laughs> uh, please go on because the next slide will be about the Kickstarter date. And so, <laughs> drum roll. Are you guys ready? <laughs> yeah. 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 Chat, Chat is ready. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here it is. Oh. October 22nd. October 22nd. Yeah. So yep. we are less than a month away yeah. for the yeah. Kickstarter date. 22nd is well, Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday, October 22nd. About. Uh... Uh, well, the hour obviously will be depending on your time zone. So yeah, I was, was going to ask what time, but I guess, yes, what time? we're international here, so, so it's dependent. It will be around, let me... Um, Conversion. <laughs> you came unprepared. No, I... I yeah, yeah, yeah. Well... Well, he looks it up. So October 22nd, 30-day campaign. Uh, it's about... Um, uh, I lost it. Uh, the... About <laughs> 10, 10 or 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Uh, yeah. in Eastern. your time zone. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Eastern time zone. East, yeah. Okay, 10 a.m. Eastern time zone. 10 or 11, depends on... Uh, Depends on Kickstarter. No, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> depends on Kickstarter, but yeah, basically around that time, yeah. early in, in the in the morning, basically. It'll start. Of course, if you subscribe to the newsletter now, you're gonna have you're gonna have you're gonna be the first one to know. So it's the best thing to do is come to our <laughs> <Exactly>. website <laughs> and uh, subscribe to uh, to the you know we don't of course uh, spam anything. So I'm just gonna. Information when we're, when we're live, so you guys can start backing us and support the projects. That's, yeah. uh, that's the best way to know. But the date is October 22nd, and that's the big yeah. date. October 22nd. That we're all waiting for. <laughs> that's, oh, yeah. A yeah. lot of people have been asking you guys for a long time. So, 30 day campaign? We're 30, looking day at? Campaign. 30 day campaign. Yeah. 30 days yeah. campaign. 30 day campaign. What's the expected delivery date that you guys are putting on? I know it always changes, so it happens with every Kickstarter campaign, so don't feel like it's going to be set in stone. <laughs> for the the final uh, delivery day, so for the the books, basically, will be probably shipped around uh, June. The summer, 20, summer, 20, summer, summer, June, summer, July, summer 20, June 2020. Okay. Yeah. Summer. For that. Um, Q, Q2. 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 Mm -mm. 2020 yeah. we'll say yeah. that gives yeah. you like a four month block <laughs> yeah. it's a safe bet hopefully hopefully more uh, more June than like later so but obviously depends on 
Uh, yeah. The logistic and there, there's a lot of moving parts. Oh, and, for uh, sure. Uh, we for sure. Be, but we already, you know, have everything, whatever we can reach and control, it's under control. Will, so, the, P yeah. will the PDF be released earlier, someone asked? That's a good question. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. PDF will be earlier. Yeah. And I was also asked, will you focus on social media during the Kickstarter, like AMAs, Facebook, Twitter goals, and adding more to Discord? Are you in their Discord already, Fawn? They have a Discord. Yeah, um, we have a Discord channel, a very small Discord channel, but we we have it. And we'll be sure, yeah, we uh, surely be doing some, some AMA during the, during the campaign, possibly another live stream or a live launch party something something I, like that so yeah i was going to reach out to you guys when to, when you were ready to start if you wanted to do another one of these we can do one if you want uh while it's yeah. live you can guys i know a lot of campaigns set up a night we're like hey tune in and we'll take your questions live hey i'm more than happy to facilitate that with you guys absolutely yep. definitely, we can definitely try to arrange that I'm just gonna link your Discord here in the chat for everybody. There we go, and they have their website. Um, yeah, it's okay. October 22nd, 10 or 11 a.m., 30 days. What, do you wanna reveal goals? Like what's your what's your price point of the book? Do we wanna get into that? Or you will, is that still undetermined? Everything is determined, but uh, maybe we should, we wanna leave some. Uh... Okay some uh i don't know if i, I mean um actually we haven't discussed this <laughs> all right i don't know today but um uh, i think that we're gonna leave some juice for the 22nd so yeah um okay yeah we can't, you can't not, it's, not, it's not something impossible first or uh we, we we did a lot of homework a lot of research everything it's very calculated and and um you know we have Kickstarter bakers too, so we understand. <laughs> These guys have done the research. Like like yeah. I said before, they're they're doing it smart. They're they felt our pain. They have backed Kickstarters that you know you've waited for forever, or you've not received, or the products aren't even written when you pay for it. These guys are not all about that. They are their book. They they waited. They put the time in. Even though people were screaming a year ago, release your book, release your book, do the Kickstarter, I'll give you my money. Like, no, 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 we're, we're going to finish doing the bulk of the writing. We're going to finish doing the bulk of the art. Just uh, look at the, you know, the, the quality of the quick start speak for itself. Yes. So. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Check out the, the quick start over on their website. Yeah, for sure. If we had to wait uh, two weeks more to release the final product, uh to polish it uh a little more and uh maybe uh doing another round of editing uh we will prefer doing this and maybe have a little delay uh then uh releasing an incomplete or faulty product but we will try to stay uh on track and uh concentrate on the deadlines yeah and uh, you know, as we said before, that basically the bulk, I mean, almost all the rules are written. So yeah, uh, the book is basically all. The books are basically yeah. ready. We we need, of course. Uh, yeah, basically the, the Kickstarter will be paying for the printing of the books, for the editing, the editing which is a big part of us and here. for additional arts and you know maps <laughs> things like that. So yeah that's um that's uh, mainly you know as we said everything we every, all the moving part we can control are under control but um the things are too out of too expensive for our pockets right now without having a big big publisher behind our back uh yeah. i don't be covered by the kickstarter so that's uh i think that's also the the the, the right moral way to do a kickstarter let's put it i there. agree i agree it is i mean it's not if it's not Asking, we're not promising something we is not ready. We're promising something, and you know, we're gonna keep the promise by making something high quality that we already have. So we have the Kickstarter gonna help us <laughs> not go broke or ask for <laughs> money to banks. <laughs> the bank. For, for for stretch goals or possible add-ons, can I ask this? I've got a I got a really nice against the dark master dice bag sitting next to me. 
Is that? Oh <laughs> yeah, you can shoot. You have it right there. Yeah, I have it handy. If we want to switch the uh, screen share off. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, we found it. Yeah. I can show. Is it? Is it going to yeah. be available in the Kickstarter? The the dice bag. Yeah. The, the dice bag. It was um, a giveaway for. I don't. If maybe there's <laughs> high requests. Who knows. It is really nice. People ask me like, is that screen printed on? I'm like, no, it's like it's like part of the fabric. It's soft. It's very soft. So this yeah. is not going to be part of the uh the campaign. We 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 are thinking of uh having things like that as add-ons, but they're they're not going to be part of the uh, okay. main uh pledges. Basically. You guys yeah, might because... be able to get one of these. This has now become maybe my, after, maybe my after, dice bag. I use this is retired the old one. The, maybe the after the Kickstarter, uh, we're gonna start to um, you know focus on this type of merchandise. But right now, um, all our attention is on the the most important thing that we all want: the book. The book itself. Awesome. So you know, my, we don't want to beat around the bushes. We just want to go straight to the point. Well, hopefully we've we've made some converts here today and uh, opened uh, some Oops. some new eyes to your game. Yeah, and guys, if you have any questions about yes, the game, we, 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 adventure, we... just just reach out, reach out on Discord or Twitter. Dis yeah, Discord or their website. These guys are Max is in in our Grim Perilous uh, Discord. You can always you can always hit him up in there. I added him earlier. What are, are you? Yeah, uh, at, uh, at versus Dark Master Max or something like that. Yeah, yeah. My, my Max. Yeah, Max versus Dark Master. I think it's so, and um, yeah. Just mm, keep in mind that we are on a different uh, time zone. So yes. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Hence so the special time. Right away. <laughs> Expect some delay. <laughs> Expect uh, some delay, possibly. Is there going to be an ongoing podcast like Sweden Rolls has for Forbidden Lands? High quality and real play. Do you guys talk to any other content creators about doing something? We we'd love to to have that, but uh, there's no mm, there's nothing set in, in stone right now. There's nothing, uh, but what what we 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 could have something like that in in the future. We, uh, I know uh, some other uh, channels that are interested in running your game, so I will get them in touch with you guys as well. Oh, thank yeah, you. that would be great. That would be great. Spread the word. Spread the good word. Yeah. Um, is there <clears throat> there's any other question? Anything else in the chat? Do we cover everything? Is there a Patreon? <laughs> Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But the quick start is um, on pay what you want. So if you want to make a donation before the Kickstarter. Yeah, see that as our patron. <laughs> yeah, oh, on, dri on drive through it's pay what you want? Yeah, the drive through is pay what you the, want. And all the products are pay what you want. Uh, no, I think... Uh, that's just the quick start. That's the quick start. But we've been thinking with the with the idea of a Patreon, but that will be uh, after the Kickstarter in any case. Oh, look at that. Oh, and if you guys want, I'm on the webpage right now. It's a giant banner across the bottom. We're coming to Kickstarter October 22nd. Look at that. <laughs> yep. It's up there. It's live. live yeah, yeah, yeah. I told you that Paolo has our <laughs> web <with her. laughs> He's on it. Okay. It's on drive through. I owe, you, I owe you guys some money. It was free when I downloaded it. I owe you guys some money for the enjoyment I got out of that. <laughs> Take my money, please, says uh, Fawn Sater. <laughs> Take my money. Well, Fawn, there's gonna be more. There's gonna be some more Dark Master on the channel here. I'm gonna I'm gonna run the uh, the next chapter of the ongoing or the campaign during the Kickstarter campaign, and uh, yeah, we'll have these guys on again. Yeah. Chat more Dark Master. He loves your Italian accents. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We work very hard. Accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we have to to put some character of it and yeah. Italian accent in, it, yeah. in some of the adventures. Yeah, I cannot do it. And he said you need to do all your characters in Italian accents, Matt. No, it's gonna be a bad Mario Brothers <laughs> like cartoonish <laughs> accent. It's not gonna hey, be good. We yeah. we have Ooh. butchered the uh, like uh, the the Irish name we we gave we we gave the um, 
uh, you know, in the adventure in Willow Lake and whatever, mm-hmm. lots of like Irish sounding name. On the obviously can't pronounce them. So <laughs> we're, we're running our game and we 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 constantly butcher the, this name. So if you butcher uh, Italian or uh, the Italian accent during your game, we we want we want. Uh, we won't judge. I won't do it justice. I'll just embarrass yeah. myself. Yeah, it's me, Mario. <laughs> Someone is in chat. <laughs> Uh, someone suggested an alternate black and white cover. I'm all for that. You know, I'm a fan of the. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Just, just saying. It's from... oh, maybe, 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 maybe. Maybe. Oh, well, there we go. Possible. Maybe another hint. <laughs> maybe in leather, you know. Some... He's, he's drawing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Tom's drawing it as we speak. Yes, he's drawing it right now. Oh, he says he really, really wants it. That's Oak, who played in, in our sessions, who's coming back. He wants he wants that black and white cover. I do too. <laughs> uh, any other questions from the chat? If not, uh, do that matte black on black glossy for the white. Mm. Oh, matte. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking matte finish. M A T E. Yeah, yeah. Oh, make it silver for. Oh, silver for. I really like silver for. Now we're getting fancy. Said we're gonna. The cost of the Kickstarter has just gone up through the roof now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on you know which uh, stretch goal, stretch goals we're we're gonna reach. You know what? Get a smash. Uh, yeah, we we'll see what 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 we can uh, what we can do. Cool. Well, if we don't have any other questions, we're coming up on the two hour mark here. Um, no. Oh, really? Wow. Let you guys get to bed. And uh, I guess Nick and I continue on with our day. I took the. Let's go, let's go, let's start, let's go start dinner. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I took the afternoon off work and this was good. I enjoyed this. This was fun, guys. What is the yeah, answer to life? Well, thank you very much for hosting us. It uh, means a lot yeah. to us. Oh, it's my, my pleasure. We'll do it again. We'll, we'll, I'll be in chat or in discussion with you guys. We'll do this again during the. Um, the campaign if you want to do like a live q a one night or something someone suggests that we do a live q a and then transition into our live play like an oh, hour before yeah. live play that might be cool too it might be really cool there just yeah. might be issues with time zone we might have to just have nick here for that one because the <laughs> hours sure, that i run I'm, my I'm games sure we can accommodate something for my cool well thank you guys thank thank you, you thank you thank you thank you matt very much so, Awesome. Well, thank you for everybody who joined us. We had a lot of folks here in the chat, and thank you everybody for the questions. Okay. Have a good afternoon, evening, wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs>